think we're back up. Let's try this again. Yes. All right. Cool. Let's see here. This is the first time I've done streaming on uh, Linux, but I uh, think we uh, I think we're running pretty smooth here. Okay. Maybe people will pop back in. I I don't know. We'll see. Um, Let's see here. Let's uh, just kind of update a couple more things. Uh, since I last left, you guys, I finished mostly finished updating. Uh, uh, And I'm just going to get walk of time set up over here. I'm just configuring my terminal. And then we should be uh, good to go. Let's see here. I am trying to get power fonts up and running, which I don't know how to do. Um, I don't know why they're not working on here, but... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Preferences, packages, walk. Man, this runs so much more smoothly now that we uh, now that we updated those settings. Whew. Let's see. I think that's it. Whatever, that's fine though. <sighs> okay. Should we take like, the real thing here? Um. Okay, great. Let's see. Do we get a dashboard?
Great. Awesome. Okay. I think we make a little addition here. Huh. Be more. Come here. Oh, okay, okay. He might just help me program a little bit. Okay. Or he'll just sit on my keyboard. What are you doing? Let's get down to the thing here. So, uh, I'm working on, oh my god, uh, a GraphQL demo project I use for presenting uh, at conferences, talks, and we're writing an upcoming paper. Um, article about uh, writing full stack GraphQL clients with JavaScript and Node. Um, I have a project that's working, um, but I want to kind of rework it for this upcoming project. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing today. So maybe I'll just do like a quick overview of GraphQL. And then, uh, then we can go through it. So kind of full stacky. This is a full stack project, fake kind of back end, um, but I'll go through that as well. Um, So let's fire this project up. I'm gonna also do a split here. Uh, okay, that won't work. Uh, split horizontally. Great. I like having a couple extra repos in there. Um, and pulling this up, getting it up and running. Looks like uh, looks like uh, something something broke since the last time I was in here. So let's figure that out. I'm gonna just pop this over on the other side here, so we can kind of see what's going on there. And then let's go take a look at uh, what could have possibly blown up. Okay. Okay, all right. I don't know what's going on there. But. Uh, expected string and component. Where are we? Where is it blown up? Index, SRC index. So let's go check it out. SRC index, source index, line 24. What happened in here? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Um, what? Uh, you know what I'm going to do is just do another npm install in there, make sure everything's running smoothly. I don't know why I wouldn't, but what the heck, you know? Um, Check the render method of list page container. Okay, so let's go see what's in there. List page container. So let's pop open that component. That looks okay if we're exporting it correctly. But got undefined. You like we forgot to export it. No, it looks like it's okay. Um, I'm gonna go through this once I get this up and running. Kind of show you why. But uh, you know, let's pull the stack trace out a little bit out to see what's going on in there. Huh. <laughs> oh no. Just try it again. It doesn't look like it's fine. I'm just gonna pop that open one more time. I'm guessing it's not gonna fix anything, but let's just try it anyways. No! Let's see here, let's see, does this... 
This should be all good to go. Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. That should be fine. So let's see here. Um, let's just pull the GitHub repo open. The point of this too is to hopefully uh, kind of show you the um, whole process, how this, how this works. Even the boring, slow stuff. Um, especially with these so these conference tutorials I do, they take, you know, sometimes it can take 10 to 40 hours to put together. Um, and the purpose of this too is I just kind of want to show how that works a little bit. Um, so let's see here, what did I do? Great, define model, did all that. Sample endpoint, that should be good to go, index. That JS. Yeah, that should be fine. What's wrong with you? I don't know if you can see my cat Vimo here. Oh no, oh no. Okay, I know. He's just hanging out. Cool. If you can see him, he's just be he's just gonna hang out with me for a little bit here. Alright. Good boy. Um element type is invalid. The other thing I'm gonna check too is see what's importing uh list page container here and then uh see what that's being exported out in there. Um, or when I'm importing. So let's page container. That should be coming through here. Yeah, why is that freaking out? Okay, so let's just check it out. This Oh no, I don't have my, my little shortcuts in here. Um list container. Whoops. That's not gonna like that. So I'm just gonna actually console log this whole thing um, and see what's actually being imported in here. Um, and give us a little uh, Okay, so we are getting a imported module. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, whatever. Let's just take a look at another component. Otherwise, I have another idea. We're just going to get super verbose with this list page container, just so there's nothing nothing funny about it. So, And I'll show you what I mean. So we're kind of a consolidated JSX component here. Um, I'm thinking uh, we can possibly... Um, make that behave a little better. Oh, no. No, be more. My computer's going slow again. Let's see here. What are we at? 20 frames per second? Oh, no. That's slow. Uh, okay. Cat on a keyboard. Okay. Oh no, Bimo, you can't sit on there, buddy. Oh no. Editor crashed. Oh no. I may have to try a different editor or something. Something's acting weird with that. Take three, take three. We got five people watching this. That still blows me, me away. That's awesome, guys. Um, I haven't really done anything yet, so I'm hoping this is a, uh, hopefully we can actually get to some good stuff in here and you guys can hopefully uh, can see how to do some graphical stuff. Okay.
All right, take three. Let's try this again. So I'm going to try just doing this super verbose. I'm just going to do an explicit return statement here, see if that fixes this. Because something's just acting kind of weird. So, oh, God, and if Adam just doesn't want to play along today, I might just have to switch over to uh, Sublime. That's a, that'll usually do the trick. So let's see here. Let's get this return statement out and then this pop this query in there this uh this container in there and then i can blow this up oops and there we go okay so let's see if that fixes anything i'm just going to explicitly return a this thing here um no check the render method You've got undefined. You likely forgot to export your component from the files to find it. I didn't, though. That's the that's the thing. I didn't forget that. I didn't forget it. Um, what could it be? What list page? List page components div router looks fine. This thing's firing up okay. Um, let's take a look at the stack trace again. Type string. We got undefined. Should we go to this page container? Line nine. It's a query. What's wrong with that? What? God's name is wrong with that. Line nine. Freaking out. I'm just gonna look at the stack trace a little bit further, dig in a little bit more, see what's going on with that thing. Uh, God damn it, this is just like a generic error message it's throwing. Unregistered stack, React stack, that's not helpful. Um, forgot to export a component from its files to find in. I didn't. The buff error. Oh, um, maybe it's just like a. Maybe it's just an error in there? Hmm. Okay, let's see here. I got another idea. Instead of rendering that, I'm just going to render our loader component instead. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just do a simple component uh, and see if we can just get that rendering. So that might still... You know, it's just going to be to get it working. So that's fine, that's fine. Well, let's just get that rolling here. It's been a while since I've loaded this project up. So maybe it's like a dependency also broke or something. I'm not sure. Um, so we're going to be using the loading component instead of the whole other component. And that'll tell us whether the rest of the project is fine. Um, let's see here. Oh, shoot. I killed a thing here, let's see, um, yeah, great, okay, so the project loads fine, it's definitely something that's wrong with that specific component. Um, yeah, okay, so what the hell's wrong with it, that's the question. Um, let's pull, pop that back in, so whoa, undo command Z, command Z, uh, and then just get rid of that thing, list page, uh, list page container. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <sighs> la 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 la. This thing is still exporting a function. Um, other thing we're gonna do too is we can check out possibly to see if it is um, anything wrong with that. Like, what is a what does these components look like as we pull them out? So I'm just going to console log these two things, actually. Um, I'm going to console log the loader and the list page. Oh, excuse me, loading. Let's see what those look like. Can't, oh. Wrong path here. I didn't, went too far back in time. Let's try that. Let's 
So let's take a look at what these look like. See, look, these look totally, uh, these look totally fine. They're the same thing. I don't know what's, uh... You know, look, we're like importing the same thing. Imported module. Yeah, that's like the same thing. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with you, huh? What's wrong with you? The thing it could be... The thing that this could be is that it could be... Uh, Apollo. So Apollo is kind of... It's a... It, allows our, it kind of wraps around a rack components and it talks to our GraphQL backend. Um, GraphQL or Apollo is really nice for playing with uh, GraphQL, but the thing you got to know about it is it's pretty. Uh, it's still pretty. The APIs are still changing a lot, so you got to watch those. All you got to be pretty careful with those. Okay, cool. And if anyone who's watching the stream too, let me know how the um, how the stream quality is too. I'm still kind of playing around with this, and I don't know a whole lot about what I'm doing yet. So, um, yeah, just let me know. Let me know if it's choppy or it's smooth or whatever. Um, I got a stream coming on locally too, but I have uh, I have no idea. Um, by the way, too, everyone, thanks for watching. I really appreciate this. This is like one of my. This is. Trying this out, I, I do a lot of programming, and I thought it may be useful if I just start kind of sharing what I'm working on. Um, yeah, especially some of these new projects too, or like the, a lot of my demo projects too. Um, they're usually a good way to jump into, and I think sharing that's kind of important. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, cool. Um, anyway, I'll be probably I'm gonna be streaming a couple times a week too, so. Do I need to update anything? Let's look at my other branches. This one could be like a partially broken one, and I'm wondering if like my GitHub pages one is gonna work. So I'm gonna try that instead. So let's try, um, I'm gonna get our GitHub pages branch here. Yeah, 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 you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Um, actually, that's a, uh, well, I'll tell you what, this. Let's stick that back to my wall. I think that's probably fine. And then we're gonna undo all the shit I put on here too. I'm just gonna clean this up. You know, the things I did were just like, uh, uh some, uh, I don't know. Em's freaking out again. Let's see. Let's 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 try something a little different. We're gonna let's sublime this. Let's open this in Sublime. Em's great. It's just like not handling my code very well. Oh no! Is this that's our bit rate. How are we doing? Okay, let's see here. You gonna, you gonna be able to do what I can? All right, Adam, I'm retiring you.
Yeah, boy, Adam is like freaking out. Um, does anyone know how to force quit on Ubuntu? Let's see if we can do this. Dang. Force quit. Ubuntu. Oh, there we go. Kinda. Oh no, what did I do? Bitrate is dropping again. What the heck is going on? Encoding overloaded. It's weird. It like starts out fine, then it just freaks out, and that's it. Let's see here. Let's uh. And it's 5.30 and it's so dark outside. Yes. Force quit. Adam, you suck. No, you're fine. Quit. Okay. I think we're back up and running. Adam just like was really screwing things up. Um Okay, 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 okay. Oh, that's just like a static update. Ugh. All right, y'all. Let's uh, let's just let's just see what's going on here again. see me yet? Not sure. But, uh, it's okay. Let's see here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is take a look at this uh, list container. React Apollo. I'm wondering, do I have all of our React 
Palo. Dude, that looks fine. Um, query. Something I'm gonna try. Console log. Query. So I just want to see what this is popping up. See if it's even like rendering it in there. So I'm seeing if it's like an Apollo problem or whatever. Um, hmm, interesting. Look at that. Look, I'm getting undefined. Um, so let's see. Let's get rid of these to avoid any confusion. But that is interesting. So that would mean that we're having some sort of issue with, uh, yeah, there it is. Undefined. Why? Um, so next thing I'm going to do then is check out React Apollo. Maybe you have to update our dependencies. So React Apollo. Let's go look at the GitHub repo, see what's going on in there. Oh man, I, that's gonna suck. Um, how are we doing though? I think we're back up, back up to 30 frames per second. That's great. Let's just take a look at the code here. Hey, I got a follower. That's awesome. Thank you. Who was, who followed me? Who is that? Who are you? Um, okay, so let's take a look at the React uh, documentation here. Uh, and query. There you are. What gives? Um, what version we on? 2.33. That's a stable version in there, huh? React Apollo. Oh boy. All right, let's see here. Um, I'm going to just try updating. Ugh. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to just try updating React Apollo to 2.3.3. Um, just the latest stable version. See if that does anything. Um, so I'm going to do an npm install again. Ugh, probably should get on a new branch. We'll do the install. Um, let's see here. Let's do... Oops, and then I'm going to do git track out dash b new branch. Um, let's do like, just call it refactor for now. Doesn't got anything too fancy. Now we're on a new branch. Great. I'm just gonna clean up here. Probably bad. There we go. Just feels better. Just feels better. Okay, so running an install on there. Um, I'm also just gonna update this npm audit fix. That's probably dangerous. I probably should have waited on that. But hey, what the heck? What the heck? Um, and. That should update it. Let's try recompiling this. Restart. And yes. Okay, I see nothing. That's great. Sub selection. What the hell does that mean? 
Encounter a subselection on the query, and the store doesn't have an object reference. Okay. Should never happen during normal use unless you have custom code that's recommended in the store. Please file an issue. Excuse me, what the heck does that mean? Boy. Huh. Let's see here. I'm going to try running this on another machine too, see if I can reproduce this in another, uh, another environment. Live, live code. Let's see here. Graph. See if we can get that running. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, this is weird. The other thing too, a lot of times when I run into these issues, usually just updating all the dependencies usually can fix these problems. Um, dang, this works totally. So I'm currently running this on Mac environment, which is what I originally developed it on, and it works totally fine. Um, I'm not encountering any of these weird issues. Uh, okay. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, hmm. Okay, what? So much totally fine over here. It's the same thing. Queries exist. Huh. Um, let's see here. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Save. Um, let's see, do I have my npm rm written here? All right, I wrote a custom script called npm rm. All it does is it nukes your node modules directory and then it does a re fresh reinstall. Um, I do it for instances like this where we're having um, issues with uh, dependencies. So it looks like Apollo React is an importing query, the query module is expected. Um, and I don't know why it's not doing that. So that's kind of unusual. Um, yeah, boy, this thing doesn't really know what JSX is either. Oh boy, oh boy, in this machine, eh? Uh, great. So we're just nuking it all. We're just going to see how this runs, then we'll kind of rebuild it here. Um, the other thing I'm thinking of that could potentially be an issue is some sort of environmental issue, too. Like maybe I don't have npm or node. Ooh, it could be a node issue. Could be a node issue. Let's see here. Let's check out uh, our node environments. So that's pretty good. MVM install. That's probably not the issue. Install stable. Ah, so I do it. Uh, sudo npm install dash g MVM. MVM's node version manager. Um, and We'll do that, and then we'll just make sure we run the latest stable release. Great. So now we've got uh, MVM install stable. What? Uh, MVM install stable. What? That looked fine. Why is that? Why is, why is that not fine? Why is that not fine? This is not the correct MVM. Oh, that's right. There's a new way to do MVM installs. You don't do a global anymore, you gotta do like a shell install now, get NPM working. This is a clean Ubuntu environment, so there's a lot of work that needs to get done to just kind of get it working, um, which eh, isn't always the funnest, but let's try that this way. So that, that script we just installed, basically it looks like all it's doing is just yelling at you and telling you that's not the right way to run it, which is fine. Um, So let's try that again. We'll do MVM install stable. 
don't know. So let's kind of do maybe an uninstall. I think it's still tied to my globally installed one. So let's try that again now. The uninstall stable. Can I find it? Um, looks like M B M U system. All right. Let's try the W get one. Do I have curl on here? Trying to update using Git, compressing. That looks okay. Great. So let's try MVM. Does that exist? What? Uh, you can remove them from the system as files. Oh, so we got to close and reinstall. So let's see here. Let's uh, let's just close, close, and then. It's not working as expected. That's okay. Uh, MVM, do you know what that is now? No. How you did not know? Try to update it, compressing. Why? Close or reopen a terminal, start using MVM. Let's just resource our thing, terminal, and MVM, why, why you know, why you know that, why you not know that, let's, okay, take two, take two, let's see here, so let's do uh, MVM, why you know not know that, Hey, got a new follower, MTS uh, Alexandra. Thanks for thanks for the follow. That's awesome. Okay, trying to see how the heck do I? Is there like an Ubuntu thing here? Can I do like a? Issues. No, that's fine. That's not us. D shells. No, 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 no. So the version of Node we're in is pretty pretty good. I don't know, like uh, on eleven five. That's pretty that's pretty up to date. I can't imagine there being issues with that. So what the heck? Why would they? Let's try that again. So nuked it, restarted it. Check the version number of NVM or Node. And I'm guessing it's still gonna crash here. Yes, same issue, same issue, same issue. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go manually go check on this. We've got Apollo React. Interesting. You guys seen this? I don't have any Apollo React in my uh, dependencies. What the heck? Why not? Dependencies. This looks Apollo React. Let's see here. All right, I'm gonna try something else here. I'm gonna just nuke this, um, and then I'm gonna try just doing an npm install. 
or save de dev dependency react. Uh, what was it? React Apollo. So we're just gonna install this from scratch. And let's see if that forces it to console. So it looks like it's not in there. Oh, dang, dang I was looking at the wrong one. I was looking at Apollo React, not React Apollo. Uh, oh, there it is. And query, I'm sure the query one's right down there somewhere. Hmm. Query recycler. What? Yeah, okay. I don't know what that is, but uh React Apollo. I'm gonna get the latest step dependency. Cool. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh and let's restart. Shit. Pop our, uh, pop this open again. And it doesn't look good. Encountered a sub selection on the query, but the store doesn't have any object reference. Okay, next thing I'm gonna try doing is I'm just gonna try to re update all of our dependencies and see if that fixes anything. Um, and then I'm also gonna like just look through and see if um make sure we're using it correctly. I don't think we're doing a major version bump. Let's see here. Um uh what's that package name? Uh update npm dependencies. What's that? I think there's a package that does this. Um uh yeah, I just want to see that all the updated I'd update all the node dependencies to the latest version. Yes, yes, yes. How do I do that? Okay. NPM outdated. Let's take a look at that. What do we got? What do we got? I have to do this a lot professionally and at work and on um, one of my side projects, sometimes you just like gets out of date and you just gotta go through and give them an old update. So let's see. Um, yeah, that's good. So we're on a separate branch, so we're safe and stable. Um, here we go. That's the, this is the package I wanted. So, uh, this will do, um, let's see. Cool. So I'm guessing that this is probably going to air out. Um, I'll show you a little cool little, uh, um, uh, terminal shortcut if this airs out. Yeah. Okay. So we got air access. If you just do sudo bang, bang, it'll redo the last command. Bang, bang is a little shortcut in the command line. It works in any terminal. Or any Unix-based terminal, excuse me. Um, and it's an easy way to just sudo your last command. Again, sudo bang bang. Bang bang. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's see here. Let's uh, let's run this bad boy. So that we'll do. Uh, Thanks for telling me. NPM check update slash update. Yeah, scary. Multiple events name slash. What's the date or time of the event? Alexa, stop. Okay. Are we all up to date here? File cache and memory. 
Did I do any major version bumps? It does not look like it, except for GraphQL. Holy shit, went from 0 to 14. Hopefully it's not a problem. Um, that's always a doozy, though. Major version bumps, always a little scary. But uh, let's just try it again. Let's try it again. So we'll do, let's restart our server again. And see if we can get it up and running. It's always good to do this every once in a while, just like update your dependencies. Minimizes chances of security bubbles, reduces tech debt. Sometimes it fixes problems. Um, a lot of times it makes problems worse. You gotta be careful. Doing a new click I did is usually not a good, uh, usually not great. Um, okay. Okay, so the query's popping up now. We can now see it. That's great. But now that we can see it, we're having some weird issues with it. So, encountered a subselection issue. Um, I've never encountered this before. And also, it looks like it's saying that that may not be normal. So, I'm just going to give this a goog. See if that, uh, see if anything pops up for us. Sudden error encountered subselection query. Uh, something I like to do a lot too is just pop open a couple of these. Um, Again, this, I know this works totally fine on Mac environments, but something specifically here with like my Ubuntu environment here. Um, App always worked until I reinstalled today, running blah, 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 blah. Looks like some people got some, uh, solved it by running some, installing a dependency on there. Otherwise, the other thing we can mess around with too is the cache. So I have an in-memory cache, which looks like it's fine. New in-memory cache, which I'm using. Const cache to. I'm hoping that this works. Looks like we're having in cache memory issues. Next thing we'll try doing, so I'm going to try this first. Um, Heck, are you serious? What? Rag scripts, what? Yeah, that should be. Then not part of my React scripts, React scripts. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Should be part of our dev dependencies. Why is that not there? React. Huh? 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 Uh, NPM install. Mm, npm d. I have a shortcut. npm uppercase d does a uh, dev dependency install. Oh, I got I got my first question. Um, so Fain Cat Capota sixty nine sixty nine. Um. You're interested in becoming a full stack developer. And you're gonna think about starting online courses. And you're wondering if you can possibly get a job from self-learning. Um, I think so. Um, so I manage, I have a team of engineers. I work at Best Buy. I have a team of about eight to 10 engineers. Um, one of them is self-taught. And I'd say half my engineers are from boot camps. Other half are senior or more traditionally trained engineers. 
Um, but yeah, it's totally possible. I work with them every day and they're awesome. Um, that being said, it's hard. I still, I, I'm a traditionally trained computer science guy, uh, but I, uh, I still consider myself a self-taught engineer. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's been a lot of programming. I, um, so I taught at a dev boot camp actually in Honolulu, Hawaii, dev league for a couple of years. Um, so I worked with a lot of students who were kind of going through that same journey. Uh, it's hard. So like teaching yourself is hard. And I found my, like, it took me years. It took me years. It took me years to, to get to a point where I was like, um, felt confident in my abilities. Um, but it's totally possible. Yeah, I think it's totally possible. Um, and I know you could do it too. I mean, watching these streams, I think is a great place to start too. Oh, and thanks for the follow, man. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. Is it possible? Like the short answer, like that's a long answer. The short answer is yes, it's possible. I work with those people every day. I think it's great. Um, and I like talking to people like you too. It's like, uh, I have so much fun just bringing people into this world I love so much. Just like programming, you know? Um, okay, cool. Let's see here. That's done installing. Now, oh, what the heck? Um, looks like our dependencies got all messed up. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to try doing another nuke here. You can see my node modules are getting blowed up. Let's try it again. Um, Uh, also, um, dude, I've got, uh, if you're interested in some online resources too, I have a blog post I wrote recently on my website. It's, I'll post it in the chat below too. Um, but it's just like kind of my top resources. It's basically just like a bunch of like Twitter accounts, some learning resources, my code crushes, um, podcasts I listen to letters I, or newsletters I follow. Um, I'll post that in the, the chat. That's useful. I hope that's helpful. Okay, that looked like that got restarted. Great. So I'm going to try restarting my server. I also have another one, npm st. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, Do I have ESLint installed? Okay. Do I have ESLint? I don't think ESLint is a dependency here. Prettier, prettier ESLint. All right. Wants me to go through it again. Guys, isn't programming fun? Isn't this a blast? You get to... You get to watch me install, npm install stuff all day long. That's the best. Let's try this again. <laughs> <laughs> I've been programming for like an hour tonight and I haven't even been able to fire this thing up again. That, is that normal? 
Terror 2012. Sup, dude? I'm trying to get this dang thing installed. Terror, hey, thanks for the follow, man. on my there we go okay hey something's happening okay that's done let's try this one more time so I got rid of my pack.json.lock file and I was causing some what uh, npm st npm what 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 what, what? Boy. from dependencies and dev dependencies. Terror. Hey, it's good. Hey, it's going okay. I can't I can't get this thing working on here. But hey, you know? That's how that's how programming is sometimes, right? Okay, let's just see where this thing is uh where this is being installed here. What oops um npm ls yes lint that's showing us where it is i don't know if i've ever done an npm ls before Uh, prettier. All right. Tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna nuke prettier here in an effort to get a React project working. I'm getting rid of prettier. Are you kidding me? All right. I'm gonna try that again. So we're gonna prune it all out. We could have just probably run npm prune. Just gets rid of like dependencies no longer using. But um, whatever. Interesting. We got six viewers, four people following. That's awesome. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, let's see here. It looks like we just reinstall our dependencies again. Let's try that again. Everything's updated. We're unable to target browsers. Would you like to add the defaults? Sure. Okay, we're starting. That's a good sign. Fail 
let's compile. Why do we need ESLint to get this compile? I thought, do we still have this? ESLint rules, no unused expressions. Where are you, where are you? Where, where? Nothing, no ESLint in here? What? Can I find? How does this, oh my God. Um, I'm gonna add it now as a dev dependency. I feel like I'm like reworking. Uh, Understand we're having so many problems. We're still on a refactor branch, which is good, but man, something's something got messy in there. And I don't know what it was. Back and stall. Cool. Um, let's try that again. NPM start. To understand. Um, by the way, I do have uh, Oh good. Terry, you got the same problem? What the hell? This is like it's a it's a this is just a stock. Yeah, it's a, just a stock create React app that I modified for this tutorial and I don't know why it's breaking so bad. Oh uh, well. Let's see here. So I uninstalled it, didn't work, and then I reinstalled it, then it freaks out again. I don't know what the heck the problem is. Huh. Um, let's try rebooting that again. Hey, Bimo. My cat's hungry for dinner. I'm wondering if I should uh, indulge him. I'm gonna plug this in guys, I'll be right back. And I'm back. That was that was fast. This thing's still installing. Dude. Yeah, what the hell? This is stuck. You think it's Webpack? It could be Webpack. 
Sit. Ah. Dang, dude. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's because it works great on my, um, my, uh, interesting. Okay, cool. So let's see here. Terror says that this might be uh, could potentially have some issues with my Linux with, uh, with Linux and Webpack. Um, so hmm, it's not. Oh wow, is that possible? That would suck. Um, it's not compatible with Webpack. I'm going to issues. Need to remove Webpack. Dependency, huh? Yeah, what the hell? I'm just gonna Google this thing. So create. Uh, oops. I got Bubba Kick. Thanks for the follow, man. Okay. Um, let's try it. I'm just going to do a search for this. So let's see here. Um, Webpack. Let's actually, no, I'll just search for create React app not working on Ubuntu. I got another idea. What if I just, um, all right, I got an interesting idea. What if we, um, I'm just going to try running create react app, uh, just, just from scratch here in another repo. Um, and let's see if this even just works. So, uh, I'm gonna make a make dir. Okay. And let's try running. I'm just gonna try running this in there and see if we can get it running. Two thousand twelve says it might be a webpack issue. Um, I'm gonna see if it is. So I'm gonna try running create React app, but just clean, fresh in the repo, because um, my React app is just kind of a modified version of that. So let's see if that works. Um,
Hey, come here. It's my cat's dinner time. Okay, hey, Bimo. Come here. Come here. Come on. Hey, come here. Okay, he doesn't want to come. We got Stroth J. Sup, man? Okay, cool. Are you fucking joking me? Oh, no, okay. What? That's okay. Okay, cool. Okay, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're okay. We're okay. So let's see here. My app. And then let's do a NPM start. And see if this works. Oh no. Okay, so create React app works. Let's see here. So, we've got another option here. God, so let's see here. Could be a module issue. That would suck. This works fine. Um, other option we could do too now um, is trying to run this uh, split horizontally. Be more. They can hear you. <laughs> I can't even chase my cat down. He's like, he's like on his own. He's doing his own thing. Ugh. Okay, let's see here. So what the fuck do we do? Let's see. So we could, um, what do I want to do? 
You know? Could be a... Something else I'm thinking, maybe I'll just use this new Create React app and then I'll just stick my stuff in there. Could potentially work. Um, I might just go ahead and do that. So let's see. Uh, public. Just, uh, no, dang it. This is old Sublime, so I can't do anything from the, I don't have to do this, the, uh, old dirty way. I'm just going to copy this stuff over. So let's see, dev, let's see here, playground, my app, dev, GraphQL, let's see here, uh, trash that. Server's got to copy over. Mm. Trash that. Read me. License. I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, and then public. Here we go. Oh, uh, excuse me. SRC. Uh, Stroth, I'll show you in just a second. Um, I am what I'm getting in there. So let's see. Replace it with mine. Replace, replace, replace. Okay. And. Um, let's see, and Stroth. Okay, so let's see here. Let me show you what I got here. Um, I'm getting this error. So it's a sub selection query issue. Oh, it looks like. I don't even know if I can get it to even compile anymore. Let's see. Can I get that to even run? It's an ESLint config issue that's even, I think, even trying to get it off the ground here. Ah, oh, this is not going to work. Oh, and this one's running. Quit. Be more. Come here. Yeah, come here. Come here. Hungry. Okay, let's see if this is gonna run. It's going slow, which always makes me nervous. What, what the hell is everything? Still loading in, looks like. So the loader, though, that's good. Oh my god, it's working! Yes! Oh my god, Jesus Christ. I don't even know what I did anymore. Why is this working now? I mean, I don't care, it's great. Oh my god. Oh. Atlanta. That's great. Oh my god. I have no idea what I did. Bimo, no! Oh, yes. Jesus. Oops. Oh my god. Okay, guys. I'm going to go feed Bimo. He needs to eat. Um. But Jesus, what? I don't even know. What, I don't even know what happens. How did that even work? I don't even know. Maybe just like installing React App and another thing that got it magically working. Dude, I I don't know. 
Oh my. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, I'm going to go feed him and then I'll take you guys on a tour of this app and how it works. Um, All right, I'll be back in two minutes though. Um, but this looks like it's uh, yeah, great. Navigate, perfect, that's awesome. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, this is wonderful. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, you, you can check out the code too. I'll post the code here on, um, uh, if you guys wanna check it out too, blah, blah, blah. CRA, try to load from MJS. What and what's a CRA? I don't I guess I don't know what that. Uh, what is that? What's a CRA? What's a CRA? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna be right back. Hey, let's go eat. Come on. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> So this is basically just like a little Instagram clone. Um, I'm looking to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to be writing a blog post about writing, making full stack GraphQL apps for Smashing Magazine. Um, and I kind of want to tweak my demo a little bit for that, um, for that article. So uh, I'll show you kind of what this looks like right now. Um, you can have a, this is using Apollo and a third party GraphQL database layer called graph.cool, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, and it uh, is pulling from that external database. So it's kind of saving everything in the cloud and we're pulling that all in. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's go ahead, let's go make a new one. I'm gonna, let's get a new GIF. I think GIFs are cool. Um, I'm using the Giphy new tab thing. Uh, and let's just look for uh, Adventure Time. Oops. Okay, cool. Let's see. Got a fun one of uh, Gunther and Jake. So let's just copy that. Oops. <gasps> Pop that in here. And Gunther and Jake. And we can post that. And then I'll post to my GraphQL database layer. And that should display on there. Cool. Um, and then if we look at that, we can also delete that too. And that should delete that from our back end. Cool. All right. And then let's take a look at kind of the back end layer. Uh, and then we'll jump into the code too. Um, but we're using 
graph.cool backend development framework. Um, I'm also, for my article, I'm still trying to decide whether I want to use this. It's like kind of producty. I might just use like a uh, just straight up. Uh, let's see here. Where, how do I get the dashboard? Like just using an Express backend and developing my own backend instead of using a third-party hosted one. The benefit of that though is it's just easier to set up and easier to explain. Kind of abstracts that all away. It's a lot more work to kind of go through setting up a Node backend, Node server, and then connecting up to the Mon Mongo database. And I do have examples of that um, when I have built those before. Um, but it's just a lot more work to kind of get that all built through an article. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, dashboard. And Stroth, yes. Um, all right, how do I get to the da dashboard? Get started, database mapping. Is that it? Yeah, so kind of um, as an API gateway that we can basically interact with. It sits on a bunch of cool development tools, which is kind of nice. Again, it's just an easy way to get it up and running. Um, uh, getting started documentation. I don't, where is that? Dashboard. It's been a while since I've been in here. Um, terminal, blog, sign up, Prisma. Get started. Okay. I can't remember how to get to the dang back end. Whatever, that's probably fine. We'll get to it later on. I can show it to you. Actually, ooh, I know how to get to it. Um, I have a slide deck I put together. Um, this is, so I've given, I use this demo a lot when I'm doing um, conference talks on building GraphQL clients. Um, I have a talk called Building a GraphQL Client in JavaScript. Um, but let's see here, which I can show you in here. Uh, if this goes, whoops. Okay. There should be a link in here. Yes, there we go. Let's see here. Oh, it doesn't have a link. Why? Ah, fuck it. How is it like so hard for me to get into like a... Like a dashboard or something? Where is that? Who the... where the hell did that come from? Okay, whatever. I'm not going to worry about that yet. But anyway, it's saving it on the back end of the service. Um, this takes you through the code. This should be um, this is the fun part. So, uh, where do we start? Let's see here. Maybe we'll start on the back end. Um, let's see here. Uh, um, basically, with GraphQL, you just have to um, define what the schema looks like, and then kind of the back end is abstracted away from you. So basically, we're just saying that we're going to do, um, we can just create posts. That's what we call these like Instagram posts. Um, but we're just, it's just a CRUD app, so we just do get post, put, and delete. Um, and uh, that makes those available. It like hooks all those GraphQL endpoints us up for us automatically. Um, if we were building an express server on our own, we'd have to configure what each of those look like and like those resolvers and how they work. Um, GraphQL kind of expands or kind of extends all that for us. 
The only thing we need to do is set up the, um, the API endpoint, which we get from going through the GraphQL uh, setup. That's all in my, the repo. If you want to look in the readme, I kind of detail how to do that if you want to set it up on your own. Um, but I have that simple API endpoint in there, kind of set up. So anyway, that's where the API endpoint exists and everything goes through and kind of talks through that endpoint. Um, so um, I'm gonna actually, let's go through my, let's go through this quick little, little slide deck real fast. So um, let's go through what GraphQL is first and then we'll go through how this all works. So um, let's see here. This is animated, it doesn't work in the browser, but um, I use GraphQL on a lot of my open source projects. Um, and professionally, we're using Felcor, which is similar, um, but it's a Netflix equivalent of it. It's basically a schema-less version of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, the thing that we do, so we, I do a lot of front-end development with my teams um, at Best Buy, but um, a pro common problem we have with our teams is if we need to get new data on the front end, we typically have to request that data from a back end team. Um, so for example, we need to get like an array of SKUs and then we need to hydrate that SKU data with like ratings and that last purchase data and um, store location and quantity and price and all that stuff. Like we need to hydrate all that information. Um, if we need to get that customized, we have to talk to a backend team and basically ask them to make a brand new endpoint. And that is kind of a scattershot approach. Um, but now having a single API endpoint, we just request the data that we want and we get back exactly what we want. Um, the only time we have to talk to the backend team is if we need to request data that does not exist yet. Um, otherwise, if that data is already there, we can kind of remix it, ask for it in any way, shape, or form that we want. Um, so, uh, GraphQL is kind of a single endpoint for us to access all that data. And it's, it's basically, it's a definition or a way for us to be able to request that data. So, um, okay, let's go back over here. Um, it's available in most major languages. Um, I'm not aware of any major language where it's not currently supported. Um, but I'm going to be doing this in Node and JavaScript particularly. Um, and let's get through to blah, blah, blah. Um, Apollo. So Apollo, um, think of Apollo as kind of a wrapper for whatever front end UI components you have. And um, it allows that f those front end UI components to be updated from that GraphQL. It's a kind of a middle layer. Um, it allows you to do some nice stuff in there. Um, like it'll do, uh, allows you to fetch data in a GraphQL way, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, it sets up caching, and um, it also combines local and remote data, which I'm going to kind of show you, but it's kind of confusing and weird. Um, and there's a ton of plugins for it. Um, obviously, Angular View and React are the ones I'm most comfortable with, but I'm sure it's being supported with other languages as well. Uh, okay, cool. So it basically gives you a way to talk to GraphQL databases, and I'm going to show you how it does that. It's pretty nifty. Um, okay, so this is just the code set up here. Um, but... Uh, so we've went through our backend as a service, our uh, GraphQL schema on our server. Um, I'm probably going to refactor in that though today. And then we have our uh, components, um, our front components. So you'll notice here, this is our index.html for our React component. Um, and we have to initialize our, our Apollo wrapper. So we're just setting the single API endpoint that we're going to be talk talking to. Um, and let's see, oh, binary digit. Hello! What's up, man? Um, and then we kind of configure what that, eight, that Apollo client looks like. So we set up an in-memory cache, so it'll just cache it in there. Um, and then it, we tell it what, what the HP link is or where where the, in a the API GraphQL endpoint that we want to hit. Um, and then this will look also very familiar if you're comfortable with um, React or Redux. Uh, you're going to be basically wrapping your entire component with the Apollo provider. So just like Redux, you wrap your entire application with Redux. So all those subcomponents, all the children components, have access to the parent components provider. That kind of trickles that data down through the children. 
Um, so we do the same thing here. We initialize our component. All we're doing is wrapping the entire component with our Apollo, Apollo provider. Um, and uh, uh, cool. So that's what we have here. Uh, we basically have a couple of routes. Then two of our index, which shows basically all of our Instagram photos here. So that's this our index page. Um, I'm gonna shrink this down. Um, Got to get this all on there. Um, that's our index. We have a um, basically a post ID. So we have a specific posts that we're pulling from. And then lastly, we have a create screen too that allows us to create and post brand new apps to our components or to our, our site. All right, cool. So I want to show you this. So basically that's initializing a brand new Apollo app is super easy. You just point to the single app, maybe set up caching if you want, uh, and then you wrap the entire app, and then you have access to everything that Apollo has to offer, which is incredible. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the one thing to note too, so with GraphQL and Apollo is you should be aware that every single layer you're adding, every, abstractions have a cost. So we're paying a developer ease cost but that also means more code to maintain and also more code like everything has to flow through in order for it to get to for everything to run correctly so um yeah that it's going to potentially slow down applications and it can also potentially make debugging and getting your application to work even harder as well um so yeah that's always tricky um but apollo does mitigate those performance risks with the caching which is really nice Okay, so let me show you how um, these abstraction layers kind of work and how they work with React. So um, with Apollo, let's take a look at my list container. So this is the this is my component for uh, basically this page. Um, this is where kind of all the Apollo logic is housed. So all we're doing here is we're pulling the query package or query react component from the react apollo um library and that allows you to just paste in your graphql query and we're doing a pull on it every 500 milliseconds and that gives you a um a function with three states either loading error and data and you can basically handle each of those states separately um, i'll be curious to see how this works with the new react suspense api um, since this loader is kind of working in a similar way to um, like the fallback, um, the fallback API with the suspense lazy API um, in React, but um, we'll see how that comes out in the future, gets shook, shook out in the future, but this is currently how Apollo is set up. Um, but allows you to do handle loading states, error states, and then also what happens if you get the data correctly from your API endpoint. Um, Super handy, super easy, and I love it because it's very human readable. Um, if loading, if error, and then just get it working. Like that is so, that's very terse and it does a lot, which is amazing. Um, I do want to show you two my queries. So uh, that's in this package here. So there's this amazing library called GraphQL Tag, and it allows you to set up GraphQL queries just like you would with um, graphical um, or like set them up how they work so it can kind of this is the function that we're running to make a query to get all of our posts from our back end um, so we're ordering by our created at date and then we're requesting these three things from our back end ID image URL and description um, which is awesome that's great we uh, And Stroth, oh, thanks for following me, man. Woohoo! Um, yeah, it's great. I love it. It's because um, typically how I build GraphQL databases too is using graphical, um, and I'll kind of formulate my request in there until I get it working, and then I'll kind of translate it over. This allows you to just copy paste that graphical request into into here and get it working. Um, so you'll notice here too, we're using um, string templates, hella nice for formatting. Um, 
and get that working. Okay. Cool, so let's go back to Restless Page Container. We're basically just pulling in that graph, GraphQL tag component in there and then making that query and then we're pulling that database every 500 milliseconds. So I can show you that as well. Um, let's see here, control shift I. Um, let's go to the network tab and I'll show you Oh, cool. Strath, you say there's a new package? Um, let's see here. I'm going to show you this real fast. You can see here, um, I'm actually making a query to my GraphQL backend every 500 milliseconds, and that's been configured with that, that pull interval. Um, I will note, too, Apollo does support WebSockets, so that means instead of having to make a HTTP request every half a second, um, what you could do is just create a constant connection, WebSocket connection and just send data back and forth that way. Um, I have not set that up. It takes a little bit more work. Um, and for the sake of just making this demo easy to understand, I have omitted it. Um, but I do like to note that you can do that. Um, Um, okay, cool. So, uh, where was I? List container. Um, I will just show you the list page too. So most of this app is actually just vanilla React. Um, so this is, I, I like abstracting out the business layers to their own components and then leaving everything else to be as vanilla as humanly possible. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. So this is our list component. Um, and here we go. So I just have a simple component um, that's just being rendered when or rendering those rendering those posts. I'm just mapping those through and kind of mapping them out. Um, same with most of these. Most of them are just vanilla React components. They're not doing anything too fancy. Um, but I will show you to uh, see here. Maybe I'll do um, the create page container. Okay. So, um, 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 um. this one I think I actually need to rework a little bit. But I'll show you, I can't remember, the thing I'm not sure about right now um, is wrapping this mutation. So this is the create page when you're creating a brand new component. Um, they're basically posting um, a brand new thing to our GraphQL database, creating a brand new one. Um, and I don't remember what the hell I was thinking when I wrapped this with a query. I don't think because our create page doesn't show anything from our back end. We don't, definitely don't need all the posts. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. But um, the interesting part is this mutation thing here. So, um, so instead of using the query package like we did on our list page, we're using a mutation wrapper component uh, in order to either delete, update, or post a brand new post to our uh, back end. Um, so this has a function that gets invoked once that uh, mutation has gone through. Um, so you'll see that this is, or the, this is the function that we want to get run when that gets created. So create post, we can go to the create page. Um, I think that this is the one that gets passed on to it. Handle click. Uh, yes, you'll see here, we're getting that create post function from the um, from the parent component. And we're basically passing through the data that we want to get mutated into the parent. So that mutation, we pass through a function to the child component here, which is the create page vanilla React component. And then we are inserting all the variables that we want to change or like post to the back end. So that includes the image URL and description, um, which you'll see here on, uh, when you create a brand new page. There's only two inputs on a form for creating a brand new thing. 
Okay. Um. Great. That's kind of the basics of it. Um, nothing fancy. This, like I said, the main goals of this this app was to try to keep things as simple as humanly possible. Um, I wanted to, or at least from like a code perspective, I wanted to like minimize it. Um, so I think I have some refactor I want to do. Um, I also want to um, update the back end, uh, the server from using graph.cool to using just a vanilla express server. Um, and then maybe setting up Mongo. Um, I'm also considering adding a Docker image to make it really easy to download. Um, so kind of wrapping that whole thing so you can just download the Docker file and then uh, get that Mongo database kind of up and running. But basically we'd be kind of setting up the um, config um, and how that would work on the back end. Um, I also don't want to get sued for using an Instagram clone. So I'm considering kind of changing up the format a little bit more. Um, I know the UI obviously doesn't look anything like it, but um, I'd like to maybe kind of change that up a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think, you know what? I think, I think I'm going to take a little break. I've been streaming for a couple hours. Um, but... Uh, I think, so tomorrow, if you guys, looks like we've got 11 people watching right now. I'm going to be working on this for tomorrow. Um, probably, I don't know, I'll post it, but probably early afternoon, noon central standard time. Um, I'll, post, I'll post it on, the, on, my, on my dashboard here too. Um, but uh, yeah, you should come in if we didn't get to actually... <laughs> get into actual coding of it, but get a quick, quick overview, get it working, which took way too long. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate everyone jumping in too. Um, if anyone wants more to be sure to follow um, and then follow me on Twitter. I post a lot about front end performance, React, um, Redux, GraphQL, new tech, um, that sort of stuff too. So you want more of that too. I post a lot of that stuff. Be sure to follow. Um, and also feel free, I don't know if this is nerdy, but LinkedIn, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, thanks a lot, everybody. You've been awesome. Terry, you asked Mongo, do I ever use Bison? No, I've never even heard of that. What is, what is Bison? Bison. Is that a data, like a NoSQL database? Let's see here. Terror2012 is asking about um, Bison. It's like a JSON. Bison versus JSON. What is. What the heck? Binary JSON. Oh my god. <gasps> hmm. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. No, it sounds like a really fast way to, uh, uh, store stuff. I've never heard of that before. Huh, interesting. No, I mean, binary sounds really fast. I haven't used too much, uh, huh, simple binary form. It's like a kind of a blob binary store. I mean, for your image stuff, um, I will say, do, um, Terror, uh, I don't know, most of my image uploading stuff, I just typically use AWS. Um, I typically use, what is there, AWS uh, buckets. Uh, yeah, I just use S3 buckets, man. Um, I've never gotten too fancy with, with image uploading. And I don't know what you're working on, but it, I would, unless it was something like really custom or fancy you want to do, um, implementing your own, go for it. I don't know, if you're kind of 
goofing around with it. I typically, all my image uploads, I just throw them in an SW or S3 bucket and call it a day. Um, but dang, that, I mean, that sounds cool. If you want to like roll your own, this might be a, this would be a great option for doing that. Okay. And everyone, thank